Thank wow, you. that was really fun. I really liked it. So everyone stay tuned for our next session that's coming up. I know the number of, uh, wo of women VC investors and founders are actually growing very fast in the fundraising community. Now this panel, Women Funders and Founders, that's powered by HKVCA Hong Kong Venture Capital and Private Equity Association. Uh, they will address the challenges uh, and or the advantages in the female entrepreneurial or investment journey in navigating this ecosystem and introduce Introducing the panel hosts, uh, Ms. Lorna Chan, Asia Regional Managing Partner and Head of Greater China, Sherman and Sterling, along with two female VCs and two lady technopreneurs. We have Ms. Tina Wei, Senior Advisor, Ocean Pine Capital, Ms. Judith Lee, Partner, Lily Asia Ventures. We have Ms. Uh, Ching Lee, Co-Founder and CEO of RedSip. And last but not least, we have Ms. Ivy Lee, Executive Director and Founder of WowFaces.ai. So everyone, uh, please join me in welcoming the ladies. Thank you so much for being with us. I'll hand uh, the time to all of you girls. Thank you. Hello everyone. This is Lorna Chen uh, here. And I have uh, Ching and Ivy in the studio with me. And I have right. Tina and Judith on the line via Zoom. Um, I know, Tina, you're traveling somewhere in mainland China and you know you, you may have a connection issue um, hanging there and uh, feel free. But I can if, hear a thing though. Can you hear, Tina? Um, if yeah. Lorna can hear us. Lorna, if yeah. you can hear us, we so, can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, the three of us are wearing our ma special made masks. So um, very exciting to be here. First of all, I love the title of this panel, Funder, mm -hmm. Women, women so, Funders and so Founders. Um, you know, very exciting to be here. Oh, I have you, four. We can't, we can't hear them. Tina, yeah, okay. Judy. Well, in any event, let me uh, just go ahead. I think and we, we should have tested before the session start. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that we have some te technical connection issues. Sure there's a chat box. It looks like the video connected. We can, we can hear audio. you, Tina. Judy? Uh, I don't even see a chat box, actually. Yeah, there's no chat box. Let's just uh, wait for half a minute to see whether we can resolve the technical oh. issue. No problem. Hello. Hi, everyone. Tina, Judith, can you hear us in the studio? Yes, yes, we can yes, now. We can. That's great. Finally, we're connected. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the patience of the audience. Um, sorry about the little technical issue that we had. Uh, what I was saying, Judith and Tina, was to the audience that uh, I love the title of this, uh, of this panel, Women Funders and Founders. <laughs> and uh, while we have four wonderful venture women, uh, two from ventures and two from um, you know, uh, companies, right? Startup companies. Um, and in order to give uh, the audience the context, I would always love to have a uh, two-minute self-introduction of yourselves. Uh, tell the audience what you what you do um, because they have, they've already known your name and your title. Um, for myself, uh, I'm Lorna Chen from Sherman and Sterling. I'm a lawyer. Um, I've been in the venture capital uh, and uh, private equity industry for 20 years. My job is to help my client uh, structure their venture capital funds and PE funds and fundraise and talk to their investors and, and uh, you know, be the bridge of, uh, of sponsors and, and investors. I've also worked with a lot of investors into ventures um, and um, you know, very, very excited to, uh, to talk to all of our um, panelists today. So uh, Judith, may I turn it to you first to talk about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lorna. Uh, I'm Judith Lee. I'm a partner at Lily Asia Ventures. I've been in the venture space for about 10 years and then healthcare space for about 20 years. And uh, it's been a, a wild ride. So uh, healthcare in China is, um, is very hot right now and had the pleasure of joining this firm when it was really just taking off. So it's been a wonderful time to be a biotech investor. Uh, very happy to share thoughts. And just as a quick plug, speaking of uh, women's panel, 
our partnership is actually 40% female. So quite proud that we Wonderful. reached that number. <laughs> yes, Tina? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, you know, great to be here. Um, first of all, I apologize. I'm actually dialing from the hotel room here. So if, if it's a little bit messy in the background, uh, that's because I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> you basically work from anywhere. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, I'm an investor as a, a both LP and GP for 18 years. Um, I worked for a US-based per equity platform for about 15 years. And I moved to Hong Kong from New York about 10 years ago to set up our Asia office. So uh, basically investor in the uh, technology, bell tech, and a lot of other fields as well, actually, um, um, as a GP and LP. It's been uh, quite a right for me, and especially as a, a female professional in the industry. Um, there's a lot of takeaways. Um, but anyway, my, that's my brief background. And um, thank you all for being here as well. Okay, thank you, Tina. Um, so turning to our um, startup uh, women, uh, Ching, do you want to talk about what you do? Yeah, sure. I'm Ching Wei, co-founder and the CEO of Recip. Uh, and Recip is the ultimate social platform that connects the world's wine lovers. Uh, well, this wine industry, global wine industry, is more than 370 billion US dollar big. And there is zero tech unicorn yet, and we aim to be the first tech unicorn connecting the whole industry, uh, letting everyone enjoy wine, or in the meantime, motivate the wine stakeholders and engage wine lovers who could come here to connect, to share, and to remember every wine experience they have. Uh, we founded the company in Palo Alto in the US, and we expanded uh, the company to Hong Kong in 2019. Uh, we launched our product in early 2020, uh, which is also at the very beginning of the outbreak of the coronavirus. Uh, we're running iOS and also Android app online, and currently we're serving more than 50, so we're serving uh, a big user base uh, from over 50 countries. Uh, and I have always been very proud of being a woman founder and very glad that I'm here today to share with you guys more. Thank you. Thank you, Jing. Ivy? Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Ivy from uh, Wild Faces, and I'm the uh, founders, uh, co founders as well as the uh, executive uh, director of Wild Faces. And uh, I've been in uh, vision based AI for almost two decades. Sounds like a long time. Uh, and uh, I have, um, you know, actually uh, wanted. Uh, wild faces, I have actually uh, established wild faces to do something uh, on the move space. That means you know you can uh, uh, you know use uh, some uh, IoT, flying IoT or moving IoT, such as drone, uh, to do many other things, such as you know uh, tracking an object uh, for MTR to do the uh, preventive maintenance, to also um, uh, streamline the. Uh, you know, the uh, if energy efficiency for uh, Cafe de Coral and uh, helping Cyberport to achieve their smart campus uh, objective. And um, other things like uh, we may make sure that we keep uh, pedestrians safe, you know, on the highway, you know, like, or maybe not entering the highway. This is for a transport department. And other things also we help uh, uh, to create a smart prison uh, in Hong Kong, like uh, uh, two years ago. So I think we have done a lot of these um, um, technology that is proven. So the way that we work is like on the move space. We actually have it patented. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, basically, you know, like your eyes. If your eyes keep moving, but so is the object in front of you. So we are trying to uh, overcome those challenges uh, in the you know computer computer vision space. Yeah, that's okay. what I've been doing. Right, okay, thank you, Ivy. Um, because we only have 35 minutes, what, what I would like to do is to ask uh, the panelists some questions and, and you can um, take turns to, to let me know your, your thoughts. And, and you know, we, at the very end, um, I'm gonna take some questions if we still have time. Now, the first question, na naturally, because this is about uh, women, um, you know, I, I was so glad to hear from Julie that 40% of, uh, of your firm consists of women. Uh, we really wish that eventually the whole industry would have that balanced and, you know, to see all uh, more women talents in the industry. So my first question for all of you is, 
Uh, what is your observation when you go around and especially in the venture world, um, you know, working with, uh, with women, uh, do you see, what's your, you know, like, what do you see in the women venturists rising when you are on the buy side and the sell side, do you really keep it in mind? Gender, you know, gender conscious, for example, oh, this is a woman venturist and, and startup. I want to pay more attention to her um, because, you know, she's a woman. Uh, does that work that way or you don't think so? Uh, may I start with, uh, with Tina? Because you've been on both sides. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, I'm, I'm on the buy side, uh, LP side, uh, but also, of course, the GP side we, we consider as a, as a buy side as well. But I guess my, my general comment is uh, most of the times, uh, you know, when we're looking for candidates, whether it's recruiting for our own firm or investing in, in a, uh, a startup companies or a GP, uh, I mean, honestly speaking, I don't pay a lot of attention to, uh, you know, is it a woman or man. In, in many ways, uh, I think it's really about the quality of the candidates or the underlying companies or the GPs. Uh, are you performing? You know, do you, um, are you execution, uh, are you executing well on your ideas? Do you have a leadership quality? So I actually don't, I'm not too mindful about uh, the candidate or the investing target, investing company, they're, they're female or male. But I, I, I do think um, it makes a difference uh, when you start building a platform, when you start it, uh, let's see, build a portfolio. Uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we do see the rise of a female uh, in leadership positions uh, and also more females taking entrepreneurship uh, sort of uh, uh, thoughts or perspective a lot more today than it was before. Um, I mean, that's that's my general sort of observations and takeaways, um, especially in the field where I'm familiar with the LP and GP side, I do see a lot of established female uh, investors uh, on the rise, especially in the last, I would say last 10 to 15 years. Um, which is which is absolutely a wonderful uh, phenomenal uh, for us as a, as a female you know um, uh, uh, whether you're entrepreneurs or you're investors as a female professional um, and I do things in infrastructure like in terms of the you know the supporting system whether you know Judy mentioned her firm had 40 percent of females right and then there are a lot of initiatives taken by the government I know there's a really famous um, uh, or, uh, uh, foundation or organization called Woman, Woman in the Finance Initiative. It's actually sponsored by 16 governments and plus, of course, leading financial institutions to promote women entrepreneurship, women leadership. So these are, there's a lot of infrastructure and initiatives put into our workplace already. So I do think it's, these are all the positive uh, positive signs and, and, and uh, uh, actions being taken. Uh, let me switch to the uh, entrepreneur side. Ivy, do you want to share your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, particularly uh, Chinese culture, we do see uh, a lot of these uh, stereotypes around us, uh, say, women, you should do this, you should do that. But the way I see this is like I try to not to think myself as a woman, okay? I'm actually, uh, I know that uh, we are facing a lot of the... Uh, 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 challenges and pressures. You know, I try to turn these pressures into motivation. So I put in extra hard work to prove it to the to my audience. Say, you know, hey, it actually worked. Because I think the first questions that when I uh, introduce my ideas to some uh, male uh, friends and the first question he asked, does it work? Okay, so I put in extra effort to make sure that. It was so every move I made, I have to be very solid, okay. Uh, put in a lot of hard work, like such as you know, I don't go uh, raise fund immediately. I actually want to uh, get the customer first, okay. So right now, I think luckily that uh, you know we are we started like two plus years ago, and luckily that uh, we got some very. Um, uh, uh, big uh, government customers and uh, they've been very supportive and uh, at least we have them talking about us rather than I talk about myself. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, so I think, um, and I got the uh, technology patented, so hopefully we can own this on the move space, uh, making use of the uh, moving IoT device, which I believe that will be a very trendy thing, you know. Judith, what about you? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, probably a couple observations, especially over time. Um, I think generally speaking, uh, at least in the investment world, it's actually relatively easy to get women into the beginner ranks, you know, it's a, in the young, younger ranks. For example, at our firm, uh, it's something like 70%. And you'll see that the number tapers off um, as you get more senior. And some of it is structural. So uh, I think we still haven't resolved um, issues around, you know, parental leave or, or childcare infrastructure. That's, that's very tactical. But the other issue is, uh, and I think this has been well known, uh, women are notoriously self-censoring. So what we find is um, the behavior of asking for promotions or getting that next role uh, for some women doesn't come that naturally. So perhaps one half of the equation is creating the opportunities and the other half is training a generation of women that will go get those opportunities. Thank you, Judy. Ching, um, you know, you've, I, I understand that your company got funding from different um, uh, angel investors and venture capital, uh, you know, organizations. Do you think that you got it because you are a, a woman or is something special you did or, um, you know, it's more of a, the, the delivery that you have from your program? I see, yeah, so uh, I, uh, so let me start in this way. So uh, I started to build this company, but in the very beginning we built a round product, but I burned all my money myself, so uh, zero saving left, and the right. team is gone, product is gone, and at the uh, uh, most, like the crisis time, that I still wanted to continue. I knew uh, I need to make a product to connect the world's uh, wine lovers, uh, and back then, uh, I started my journey of like raising angel funds, and uh, uh, today we have been very successful. We have more than uh, 30, more than 30 top-notch angel investors and the VCs around the world uh, backing us. And uh, I'm very proud that actually the first angel investor we have had is a woman. Uh, Great. And she's, yeah, she's the, uh, first per per she's the first person writing the check for us. Uh, and there was an interesting story, actually. I met her, uh, firstly pitched to her, and she uh, rejected in the very beginning. Uh, and I met her again through a pitch competition just two weeks after. Uh, and she came across me and then asked me, hey, Ching, are you ready? I was like, ready for what? I was like, is your term sheet ready? I was like, yes, we're ready. And she said, like, yeah, send, send me the term sheet. I, I want to be in your journey. And I asked her why, right? So what changed your mind? And uh, this is her answer. She said like, wow, because um, I saw you two weeks ago. Uh, I didn't really decide like, shall I invest? But I saw you again today, only two weeks after. I saw you as a totally different person. And I think this is the founder that I am going to invest in. Because to a startup, it's uh, about two things. Yeah. It's about your vision, and second is about how resilient you are uh, and how fast you could change yourself to be a real founder. And I was very touched at the, that moment because that was my first angel founding. Yeah. Uh, and that really speaks about to something. I think the first thing is the women support women thing uh, that uh, we have been through a lot of challenges, but right. uh, talking in front of a woman investor uh, and this is also uh, the uh, advantages now we have that we could understand each other and in this type of a situation, uh, we, we, we get a lot of support. Uh, and I would just say the success of a fundraising uh, should be coming from um, a lot of elements and the gender gap is still enormous. As like there uh, was just a recent Harvard Business Review study saying that when uh, entrepreneurs are raising funds, uh, there are 66% uh, of the questions towards the male founders are uh, promotion oriented. That means like uh, investors are more willing to ask male founders, uh, what's the opportunity, what's the gain from investing in this venture? And towards female founders, there are more than 67% of the questions 
are prevention oriented. That means asking about the, the chance of a loss, the chance of a failure. Mm. And that's positioning the female founders into a very tough situation. And it's definitely much harder than the male entrepreneurs to uh, raise funds. Uh, but I guess it's also through this journey that women earn more uh, resilience. And uh, that's how we're turning the adversity into our edge as well. Right. Thank you, Jane. That's a fascinating, fascinating story, how you raised your mm -hmm. first, uh, first round of funding. Um, <laughs> yeah, great job. Way to go. So Ivy, uh, I think this um, you know leads to naturally to my next question for everyone is um, you know the challenges that you face during the you know you, you know for example how how difficult uh, it was for you to raise um, to raise funding right for your venture uh, you know how how what did you do to overcome the challenges uh, especially in the pandemic we're not traveling anywhere you know. Tina is traveling, but uh, you know most of us are, are stuck, and, and you know you have to endure the the um, the quarantine and everything. Um, yeah. What what did you do? Yeah, I think in terms of fundraising, we actually targeted uh, with some. Um, we did not try to do it uh, on purpose. We actually uh, met some friends, and then uh, through the uh, we got two uh, angel investors uh, mm -hmm. joining. Uh, they are not just investing; they also uh, joining us, you know, and take a road to make sure that they can help us to grow the company on a daily basis. So I think I'm very lucky to have uh, both of them are male. So I think right. that balance out also, you know. Okay. So um, uh, in terms of these uh, pandemics happening, of course, uh, was, was it your next question? Uh, or the, the, the challenges, right, uh, presented by the pandemic? Uh, yes, to your, to yes. Your uh, the, I think the, um, first of all, I think it's, uh, it's uh, challenges not just for women, it's challenges for every business, right? So I think uh, uh, the spending has been cut back and they will be uh, very cautious, you know, on uh, how to, uh, particularly for non-essential uh, items, right? So uh, the way we actually quickly um, adapt to it is like we actually introduce something called anti-contagion, you know, to help contain virus, you know, so particularly to track, to be able to track the uh, uh, virus uh, carrier uh, from place to place to make sure that he's, he or her no longer, you know, not spreading, you know, not uh, who, who they are being in contact with, right? And that's, uh, as well as like uh, to make sure that uh, the compliance part of the social distancing. So we actually quickly put that together. And uh, I think um, uh, from, uh, from my own, like I think I will feel like that I want to do something to help uh, to uh, during this very difficult time, um, you know, um, you know, century uh, uh, type of uh, uh, virus happening right now, right? So I'm trying to do something with the AI, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Judith, you've mentioned just now that um, you, you've seen communication issues and the accommodation to women, uh, women team players. Uh, what are the other major challenges that you see, especially created by the pandemic, the lack of uh, opportunities to travel? But in the meantime, you know, working moms, staying at home, spending more time with the kids, you know, trying to balance life and work. Um, what's your observation over there? Yeah, so, well, specifically to the pandemic, um, I think working from home, and this is not, of course, not true in every family, but uh, usually the woman does have a disproportionate, uh, at least mind share in caring for the family. And, uh, and women, I think traditionally have also been less good at creating boundaries. So, uh, you know, when the man kind of um, uh, is focused on his job, it just becomes easier to kind of decompress and completely sign off of family matters. Uh, and has been shown that women, uh, even within firms, tend to play more of a housekeeping function. So a lot of um, they worry a lot more about the, the uh, a lot of the hidden things that could go wrong. So obviously, in a pandemic, uh, this is all exacerbated. Uh, but on the flip side, I sometimes I wonder if the virtual arrangement could be beneficial to some women. So uh, what it allows you to do really is work in times that is more convenient. Uh, the other issue is obviously uh, less travel, maybe actually good on the flip side. So net net, I think it, we don't really know, um, you know, whether it's uh, beneficial or harmful to women. Uh, what we do know is uh, it does create challenges of everyone, and we have to be all very creative. 
at, at least at our firm, um, one kind of best practice for, for all uh, deal professionals, not just women, uh, but also men, is that we, we're all better prepared. So um, doing something uh, live in a virtual webinar, for example, we do take a lot more time preparing the materials. And therefore, recognizing there's a limited attention span to the audience, um, I actually think uh, as an ironic uh, benefit, it created more of this preparation culture, which is probably healthy for our entire industry. So, uh, so yeah, hard to say, but I, I can see actually pros and cons. Okay, Tina, do you agree? You're traveling and you know, must be facing a lot of challenges, including the 14 day quarantine in a hotel. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that the quarantine part is for everyone. Um, so uh, for, for any professional need to be on the ground here in mainland to do business, we all have to, you have to make a decision. Do you want to take that uh, mental and, and physical challenge or you want to stay in your comfort zone in Hong Kong? I think either way is fine because it really depends on the situation. Uh, but I do think the pen that I actually saw a number today from the pitch book, it mentioned the uh, female founder uh, this year in the United States, 2020, United States, uh, the VC funding towards the, uh, the female founders dropped to three years low uh, this year. Uh, I don't know exactly the reason, but I, my guessing part is that, uh, well, first of all, you know, when, when the time is not good, right? It, it's just timing is not right. So the VC is going to stick to their comfort zone, which means they're going to talk to the people in the network. So if they already know the entrepreneurs, they'll just talk to their existing entrepreneurs. They're not going to venture into an unknown you know, place and say, okay, here's a female founder, let's go find more about her. Uh, that's, that's my guessing part. And also, I, I think I read somewhere, it, it mentioned that um, a woman, uh, of course, given the pandemic, you know, there's additional caregiving uh, or caretaking part of the role. And plus, you know, a lot of remote school, uh, remote learning, schooling uh responsibility that happening at school i mean at home now in, in terms of uh instead of at, at school so that for any family who has children you know you you, you naturally will spend more time with your kids and women in, intentionally i think they're they're more leaning towards to you know a, a stable income and 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 a, a health benefit right long-term health benefits that sort of family planning thing so a lot of entrepreneurs uh in the time like that women entrepreneurs make a difficult uh, choice you know they decided you know what for now i may just stick with what i do right now and when it, when, when i have less responsibility with my children with my family or times better maybe i'll pursue a different entrepreneurial route so i think that's a lot of combination of things going on but i do think it, it does create um uh, the pandemic does change people's perspectives and people's working behavior and also you know women um, I would say women or men, you know, we are all thinking about what's going to happen post pandemic, right? The challenge is going to be different. And, uh, uh, you know, especially a lot of, uh, female professionals, my, my friend circle friends, um, we, we tried really hard. This is my personal experience and also, you know, friendship really hard to balance, uh, family and, uh, uh the work life balance and also deal with a lot of perceptions, expectations at work. So that's my sort of uh, takeaway. Thanks, Tina. Um, Judith, back to you. Um, the, you know, the venture world is you know, actually consists of many, many sectors. Um, some of them can be conceived as hard for women uh, to get into, and some of them are relatively you know, probably second to nature to women like consumer product and cosmetics industry, et cetera. Do you, do you see that trend? Do you, do you see, uh, what, where do you see the opportunities in the venture world for women if they want to get into it? It's a great question. Um, so if you really think about it, half of the world population is female. So uh, half of any balance market is female. And then there's some, perhaps there's some male only industries as well, but there are also some female only industries. Uh, it reminds me of um, back in the day when my, my husband was working in a private equity shop that focused on a lot of consumer products. And he, uh, every time they looked at a fashion brand, um, you know, for buyout, he would come ask me. And I was stunned to find that his entire investment team was all male for something like a women's jeans brand. It doesn't make any sense at all. And if they had just had a little more diversity, I think they would make smarter judgments on these female dominated industries. Um, from my standpoint, so uh, biotech is relatively balanced. I think, um, you know, obviously 
uh, most diseases affect women and men pretty evenly. And then there are some female health issues and some male health issues. But of course, the, the technical training uh, is very unbiased. I, this, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. You can get an MD, you get a PhD, and become very good at this industry. So it's a, a relatively objective industry. Uh, where I get a little more worried is, um, for example, in, in certain pockets of the TMT venture world, and I have many friends here, you'll see that the number of female investors is exceedingly low. And I think part of it just comes from history. So uh, traditionally, it's been kind of these old boys clubs of investors all that all know each other. And naturally, people, these are small firms, so they like to hire folks that look and feel like them. And if it's a team of all men, then you can imagine the next graduating class is all men as well. So that, that's slowly starting to change. But I have to say, the depressing number I recently heard is um, in terms of VC partners uh, across the world, it's right now less than 2%. And uh, I, th I think we can all agree that's an extraordinarily low number. Uh, Asia is probably doing better. I, there was not a geographic breakdown, but, um, but it'll, it will have to change slowly. I think um, with these smaller firms, it is harder to have a more diverse base and it's harder to promote in a more diverse manner. Um, so yeah, we'll slowly work towards uh, what is a more equitable number. Thanks, Judy. Ivy, you are in technology, you know, as, um Judith mentioned, uh, it may be hard uh, in a you know, male-dominated um, sector. What do you think? Why did you start uh, in technology and what, what's your thought? Yes, I do love technology. I think in my whole life I've been in uh, IT and right now I'm in the niche of IT and I do compete with a lot of the male, <laughs> male, uh, you know, uh, my counterparts, you know, and things like that. But maybe I don't always compete, but I actually collaborate with them, uh, you know. But I want them to uh, focus more on what I can offer, the benefits that they could get from me, rather than me as a uh, women uh, entrepreneur, right? So uh, we, we also uh, like like we have to be very nimble. Uh, so to adapt to this um, uh, COVID uh, uh, situation, so such as, you know, uh, we used to be very focused in Hong Kong market, talking to customers face to face, but now we are moving uh, away from, uh, uh, you know, these uh, like project basis business into a SaaS platform. So you, we can address the world market and uh, uh, we try to, uh, because our technology can mimic um, you know, the complex human intelligence better. So we can actually overcome the traditional deep learnings uh, uh, that often require uh, massive uh, data training, data labeling uh, exercise. So I think we believe that uh, we are aiming uh, to uh, grab the uh, world market. Uh, uh, hopefully we will become the, uh, uh, the next generation uh, AI platform for all the people who like to build uh, the AI. Thanks, thanks, Ivy. Um, I see that we have a few minutes left only. Um, I uh, hopefully would uh, have a Q&A session, but I haven't seen any questions coming from the audience. So I, as the host, now have the advantage of uh, uh, asking one more question for my panelists. Um, with a few sentences, can you each give the audience some advice? I mean, it's a, a very challenging world around us now with what's happening. Um, but with any challenge comes opportunities. So I, I can say, I, I would like to say that there's never a better world or opportunity now to get into venture, to start up and to be an entrepreneur. Um, so if um, a young woman or not, not just a young woman, you know, people like me, I just want to retire tomorrow and become an entrepreneur. Um, what kind of advice you would give um, to women who want to be an entrepreneur um, to start with. Let me start with uh, Ching. Uh, yes, uh, I would just say uh, surround yourself with um, it's like extraordinary, like it's just like um, excellent and awesome women, especially uh, women founders and the founders uh, where you could uh, find people who do like share your uh, DNA, share your value. Uh, and this is, I think, uh, that's the spirit of how it guided us through so many challenges uh, and make us stay strong. Okay, thank you. Ivy. Yeah, so um, 
Uh, I think if you believe in yourself, if you think you are innovative, uh, you are willing to take risk, uh, of course high risk means also means high return, uh, you know, just believe in yourself, uh, give yourself a chance, uh, you have all the good sides as well as the bad side, bad sides that you might need to deal with uh, sacrifice, like what Ching early mentioned earlier, you, you use up all your money, all your savings, you know, if you're ready to take risks, uh, I, I believe that, you know, you can um, join us, you know. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Tina. Yeah, I think, I think the two other panelists said it all. I think um, who you are is pretty much built into your character, right? Your experience, your, your determination, what do you really want to do? What are you, your strength? These are, I mean, your weakness. I think people, uh, we know ourselves better than anyone else. Uh, so determination is, is truly important. And also, of course, the passion, right? You got to do something you really like to do. If you want to be an entrepreneur, go for it. Uh, of course, you have you need to have all the supporting system. Like you need to have a mentorship program. You need to have an ecosystem that helps you, your family, your network, your professional uh, uh, network, and also looking for collaborative partnerships with with either individuals or, or companies. To build that ecosystem is very important for your successfulness. Uh, and also, um, you know, be happy. I think that's very important. Thank you, Tina. Judy. And Lorna, you gave me the hardest job. It's incredibly <laughs> difficult to follow all those insightful and wonderful comments. Right. Uh, I guess it's similar, my thought is similar to Tina's. Um, it, it, you should be passionate about what you do and then also be authentic. So it's got to be something that really is you. Um, and you know, all of our, uh, this panel I think is um, composed of women that really love what they do uh, and hopefully it shows. And once you follow that, then you will get very good at what you do. And regardless of if you're male or female, the common currency is competence. If you just get really, really good at what you do, then you will get respected and you will make it. So hopefully, um, you know, a lot of other women can also find that path. Thank you, Judith. Yeah, um, our time is up, unfortunately. Um, I've had the uh, honor of having 35 minutes with my wonderful four panelists. And uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank Cyberport and also Hong Kong VCA to make this panel possible and um, to make it so encouraging for women entrepreneurs and, and women venturers. And, um, you know, thank you again. And uh, we wish you a good afternoon and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.